My family, blessed love, give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie I. You don't know you're definitely in the tiger's nest or full preparation for the Sabbath day. Of course, the Honorable Priest Isaac here with you. You don't know father and the mother of creation. We exalt in all our doings and sayings. A special program that I have in store for you today. This is really the chalice talking. So I hope you have the time to spend a little moment with us today. As I said, this is Chalice Talk in full effect. And uh, we're gonna be talking about the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. And the reason why I had to highlight it as, um, you know, the truth about King Emmanuel, the real King Emmanuel, is because the previous video that we did with the 108, someone was commenting and saying, well, listen, you know, they, 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 they were a bit put aside, you know, as it relates to my information. And they were saying, how is it that I can give him a birthday when we, Bobo Shanti, preach that he doesn't have any mother? Now, I think I, even in that specific episode, although I didn't go in no detail, uh, I think I was trying my best to express that, listen, man, there is a lot of misconception. I would say a lot of spooky vibes does go around the whole meditation as it relates to the Honorable King Emmanuel. I think it was, is without any doubt whatsoever that we're dealing with a very mystic man. That is for sure. And I think that I've taken my time over the years to sift out reality from what I can't prove. Let me put it that way. Now, there's some things you would hear about the Honorable King Emmanuel, Marcus Gavi, Haile Selassie, that mm, you may not be able to put your finger on the proof. You may mention it because it, the, the word gets around. But there's certain aspects as it relates to the Honorable King Emmanuel, Charles Edwards, and, and the mystics thereof as it relates to him. Look at the whirlwind. Look at the whirlwind when King Emmanuel laid down the structure. The Honorable Priest Earl can give you in detail how that took place, you know, as he was the one carrying the, serv the service when they said they put the box in the hole and he could even tell you the priest, you know, that literally took up the, the, the shovel of dirt and threw it in the hole and then the whirlwind came out. If I'm not mistaken, it's Priest Linden. And the whirlwind came out and so many different things and everyone had to hide and run. And, you know, that may sound miraculous to some people. Because if you notice, there are a lot of different ones out there as Bobo Shanti that, you know, speak of their experience. I'm talking about ones that trod with King Emmanuel. I don't mean somebody like me who never sit with King Emmanuel. And I'll put myself in that position because I hear some people on some different programs make some remarks about me straight up. They say, oh, he's talking about special visit and, and he wasn't there. So, I mean, you talk about everything that you were there. I mean, we got to come out of that childish mentality you know we do what we do with humility rastafari you understand and there are those who would have been with the honorable king emmanuel some man will tell you it's not emmanuel it's bongo eddie ones will tell you Haile selassie is emmanuel grandson remember you know even the first time i go bobo shanti hiller i remember hearing one saying king emmanuel higher than Haile selassie i'm telling you what i hear I'm telling you what I hear, and I had to carry that to other Bobo Shanti and ones who say, my Lord, don't worry, that man, you know, that man paranoid and, you know, X, Y, Z. So anyway, I didn't bring it today to go too far into all of that. You know why? Because we have taken our time. Not just over the years, just this past year alone, I think we have taken our time to, to produce proper uh, uh, programs on this YouTube platform, Facebook, Facebook platform, um, uh, of course, Radio Anu, Tiger's Nest, our online lectures. I mean, we do what we can do. Let me put it that way. I was going to say our best, but we, that's not our best because we can always do better. But we try to make sure we bring out proper information to our family. Family, I don't come here to, to give you no information or no, no knowledge that is not correct. You know. I make sure you understand I don't come here as the Mr. Know-it-all. In fact, many things I put on the table is to hear your response, to read your comments, to see what you think about it as we are a growing nation. You understand? But we know the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards is the Melchizedek. He is the Christ figure amongst us, but he is a man. 
and it is reality that we need to bring to the, the nation, the understanding of the man as a man. And that is what I want to do today. Yeah. In fact, what I'll be doing, I'll be reading from a one of our pamphlets that the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards himself put forward. And um, to me, that pamphlet shows you not just the reality of the man, but the reality of the man still, even in the state of Christhood, you know? So even before I start, I want to read something here, which I find quite interesting because what I'm going to do, in fact, before I go into all of that, eh? before I go into all of that, let me just do this first. And of course, you know, enough respect to the young princess, Princess Nyla. Yeah, man, <laughs> I just gotta give enough respect for this one. Hi, my name is Nyla. And I um, am seven years old. Listen to her. I like my astronomy class and I am loving it. Listen. And um, <clears throat> I've been learning my planets like the moon and Earth and the um, Venus, Mercury, and astronomy class is awesome i've been learning about like egypt and time. yeah like stuff and king and queens and yeah and pyramids and yeah what do you think thus far of the international home school uh, program I believe it's the best investment I could have made um, for my daughter and for myself as well, because learning um, astronomy and um, African heritage, it, it, it was needed, it was much needed. And, and, um... Yes, family, give thanks. Eh? So make sure, as it says here, you enroll the young ones today. Definitely, you could hear the, the testimony from the young Princess Nyla. The enough respect, young princess. Believe me, enough, enough respect. And you could definitely hear the reality and, and how she has grown so much. Imagine if she come and talk to you now. <laughs> as it relates to that growth yeah but anyway family i'm reminding you before i get to the depths of it remember this sunday now in the tiger's temple we will be covering the subject area the reality of the bible don't take the title simple eh? we're going to be going into this on, an, on a level that you've never seen we're going to be touching upon its history the biblical history not the history of the bible we'll be touching the history of the bible itself the book i mean it has a history it didn't just show up drop out the sky you didn't just go to church and it wasn't there it came from somewhere i mean ones may have their own theory and there's a lot of theory and speculation and then we have history too and and history as we know it may not give you all the answers believe me history as we know it may not give you all the answers but at least you got to deal with the facts that you have around you and where the facts or evidence is missing then you could try to fill in the space i want you to follow me good but as much as you can, bring hardcore evidence, hardcore sources. All of that is very, very, very important. So what we'll be doing on Sunday, of course, you know, we always begin with the speeches of the king as it relates to the Bible. As, as Rastafari, to me, it sets a, a, a divine foundation going forward. But then we have to break down the reality of the Bible, especially what we have in our hand and the King James Version, and, and where it came from, and whatever the original Bible is, where did that come from? And plus, we have to understand now, not just the book itself, but, but how do you read the book? To me, that's the main thing. How do you read the book? Because a lot of us don't know that science. That's why we throw it away, throw it in the rubbish too quick, because we don't understand how to go into it and decipher it properly. Yeah, that's why even sometimes you reason with ones, they will tell you, well, you know, you know, it's 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 a it's a good book, but the, but it's misleading us because we've lost touch. At, well, okay, well let us find touch, and then we could read it properly and go into it and decipher it properly. There's too many things in that book to be deciphered that we we want to throw it away. Trust me, family. Take it from me, and I'm going to show you straight up. I'm going to show you how to 
decode the Bible, real thing, straight up. I mean, you can take it how you want to take it. But anyway, that's this Sunday in the Tiger's Temple. And remember, every Sunday we meet in the Ty Tiger's Temple. Huh? This should be a staple for you. Not just this Sunday. Oh, you're going to wait to hear what we're talking about. No, 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 no. This is the Tiger's Temple. And even if we're not talking, we're going to invite someone to talk. We're going to have lecturers that will come into the Tiger's Temple on the Sunday. So even if you don't hear us advertise nothing, just know you're coming into the temple to get a good vibe. We're going to be having wonderful interviews, debates, of course, question and answer always available. And it is always interactive. So, so when you come in this Sunday, for sure, you'll be able to comment. You'll be able to ask your questions, whatever the case is. You will be there with us in the Tiger's Temple. And remember, the contribution is only ten dollars you know and it's a contribution i don't call it this an admission although you're adding to the mission but we don't refer to it as no admission it is a contribution you know to come into the temple specifically if you get your your space before the literal day but on the day it's only twenty dollars and if you add a five to that you can get the whole month you can come into the nest the temple the tiger's temple for the whole month specifically with that small contribution can you imagine that so i'm looking forward to your presence this sunday you know how to contact us email us precise at institute at g mail.com you can call our whatsapp to you know and let us know specifically you know that i would like to be in the temple this sunday it's going to be great we start at 8 p.m in the evening it's going to be wonderful and hey once you're at it eh, let me just make it clear to you those of you who are interested in the international home school program keep in mind eh, i gotta keep reminding you that you ain't got to pay nothing to get a preview of what the homeschool is about you know in fact i am waiting on you to link me and say priest send me some information on the homeschool let me see how it look i want to show my little child i want to show my little children i want them to see what astronomy is all about they've been asking me i know some of your children ask you I know some of your children say, mommy, daddy, or uncle, priest, eyes are talking about. We can see. No, 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 we don't have the time. <laughs> Come on, man. You can get it for free, family. Look, we offer free. Look, we offer free language arts lessons for free. Have you ever contacted us and said, I would like some lessons for my child? I'm being honest. That's how I see it, eh? We got to love our children, Rastafara. Honestly, from my heart, we got to show more love for our children because we would go to them other people's school who were bent on killing us. Remember, it's a kingdom we're raising here. You know? At least that's how I look at it. Anyway, I think I'm going a bit too far here. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm more thinking on serious levels and, and you know, economics and, and nation building. I'm thinking of nation building. And maybe this is not the time for that. Maybe we just want to, you know, cool out and be entertained. All right. Sorry. Hope I didn't disturb your dinner. All right. So where am I? You see, I got to think about what I'm saying now because, yeah. But anyway, you can definitely, for the Tiger's Temple, you can definitely make your contribution using the Cash App and the PayPal and the link is in the description below. Now, remember, this is Charlie's talk. Eh? And um, even if you're not eyeballing me, definitely we're going to light up the Chalwa right now. But what I want to do before we get into the mystics, is the mystics? Well, it's still mystic, but we're dealing with the truth about King Emmanuel, the reality of the man. All right. But before we go there, I actually want to highlight to the family some of what we did um, this Sunday past in the Tiger's Temple. You know, well, as we were speaking about, of course, astronomy versus astrology, and we were highlighting the upcoming eclipse and so many different things. But before I go there, I want to read something for you from the Black Supremacy book. This is from chapter one. Listen how it starts. Listen to the first chapter. Listen to this. The headlight of the Ethiopia International Congress began in March 1958. And it says here, and today, 20 years after, which will be 1978, 
And today, 20 years after, the Congress has, here it is now, get your pen and pad, do the maths, 14 priests, 60 prophets, and 14 empresses. I'm sure all Bobo Shanti that know the Black Supremacy book has come across that. When the father highlight how much people in the Congress. It's not, I never really come across a, 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 a record of how many people in the Congress. Only once when in the interview, 1982, when the man asked him how much people up here, he said, I have about 100. Yeah, that's about 100. But he himself, the Honorable King Emmanuel, if you want to say, gazette it in the Black Supremacy, that in 1978, 20 years after the finding, because remember, the foundation was 1958, so it was the 20th anniversary, and the king looking on the record to see how much people he have now. Maybe it's over 3,000 rest of the, the gather in 1958, you know. So now let's see how much we have now from the 3,000. <laughs> 14 priests, 60 prophets, and 14 empresses. And I found that interesting because that's 88 people, eight, eight people. And there are 88 known recognized constellations in the heavens. And this is from ancient time. 88 constellation and 88 members when the king took that, if you want to call census. Talk about the heavens declare the glory of God. All right, as I hold this meds, let's just take in some of the, the temple from previous Sunday. This was Sunday gone in the Tiger's Temple. And give thanks to all the brethren and sisters that were there. All right, let's take in a little of this. And then in a few moments, I'm going to get into the reality of King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. Let me just light up the chalo and take a few minutes. You know how we do it, eh? Give thanks. Holy Emmanuel eyes, Lassie Ija. Rastafari, 21st day of March, the vernal equinox, where the sun is, that's how you determine or judge an age. Good. So with that movement of the sun, one degree every 72 years, going on to its 2,160 years fulfillment, and we, that some people actually believe we are in the Aquarius age. So if that is so, these zodiac signs that we move or use will be totally off the grid. Because the, 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 the zodiac signs must move in accordance to the age. So in other words, again, in the Pisces age, the sun is in the fishes or fish on the 21st day of March. But in the Aquarius age, the sun is in Aquarius on the 21st day of March. In the Pisces age, the sun is in Gemini on the 21st day of March. But in the Aquarius age, the sun will be in Taurus on the 21st day of March. And that is why up to a day like today, 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 this year, 2022, on the 21st of June, the sun would not even reach the Gemini as yet because the clock is moving, it's ticking, and the age is changing. So if you believe in the astro guide that much, and if you really believe, because that's how, we, how people talk, how people talk like that. Yeah, man, my husband, he's one of them Aries, and he's stubborn, and he this and that. And I mean, wow, who tell you that? Who tell you that? What was going on with Aries when he was born? So where was the moon when he was born? What type of moon was it? Maybe it was a full moon in some other constellation. Obviously, if it was full, it was in another constellation. Maybe it was Mars was somewhere else. Maybe Venus was with was with Virgo, which is double female spirit. Maybe Mars was with Virgo, which is Mars is a rough spirit, but the woman feminine spirit could cool it down. All of these are symbolic vibes. That's how we read the heavens. Not what color lipstick is supposed to wear today because you were born on this day. No, we don't believe in that. Now, in sealing up. So now this is the exact time. The 50th day of uh, May. 21.28 at the time now. Yes, 9 o'clock. So, okay. Now, let me show you this. We're going to see it up here. Let me just centralize this. So, we're watching the moon. Eh? We're watching the moon. Hey, how is that uh, sticking? 
we are watching more. Okay, good, central. So the moon here is in, this is Libra. Okay, the moon is in Libra. This time is 10.29. If you notice the moon look like it's getting smaller because this is the eclipse beginning here. 11.29 and by 29 past midnight, it would have been gone. See this, you're not gonna see it. If we big up the screen, you see a little red ball, you see the moon here? That's under its eclipse phase. Let me just move this quickly as time moving. This is how it's going to look tonight. The same thing you're seeing here. See, this is the same thing. So by one something, you'll be able to see half of the moon. I'm going to reverse the time again just to show you. This is exactly what you'll be seeing. But all of this is taking place in the scales. It's taking place in the scales. Now, you may say to yourself, so why is it? See the stars come. Why is it astrologers would be saying that is taking place in Scorpio? Remember, it's every year they do this. Eh? Not every year, every month they do this. They tell you the new moon is one place and the full moon is the other place when it's not really in the constellation. Sometimes they get it right. But you should know why this happens by now. It's because they are using an outdated chart. Because that's why we went through this, you know, to show you for yourself. You saw for yourself the validity of it. But the time for it is gone. So the heavens is different now. Plus this European Eurocentric idea of what these constellations mean, that could be a big trap too. And then now, even if they were correct with the meaning of constellations and where planets were, uh, 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 where the sun is at a specific time. But yes, they may be correct with the definition of it, but the academics of it is off. So the definition will still be wrong. You will be getting a wrong reading because you're using an old chart. And this is why you see I and I come out all the time. Some people may say I disgusting, but we come out all the time challenging the astrologers. Not that we want to fight with nobody. But I mean, when you sit down and you go to all these astrologer channels, they can't everybody's win. saying the same thing. They can't win with us. That's why I said it's almost like it's it's a, a, a flip side. It's like Christian them all over again. Something taken from the truth, but just there to purposely manipulate the people. Because astrology is a big thing. And a lot of people, astrology is a religion by itself. Eh? It's a, it may not be branded a religion. It's a religion. A lot of us. A lot of us, some of you here, believe in a lot of that. And yeah, the moon is, and Mars is in retrograde in this constellation and that constellation. Very good. You are correct. Because the fact that the, 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 the planet reverses, and it doesn't really reverse, you know, it's the Earth overlapping. So it gives this impression as if it's going back. The fact that it does that mean it pull, it's like electromagnetic pull. It's like passing a magnet next, next to another magnet and it spins. So you are right to believe something is going on when a planet goes into retrograde, but exactly what and, and which constellation and which planet, you know? So yeah, family, give thanks for such patience, for listening to I for that moment there, because I'm telling you, sometime even while we're speaking, putting all of this together, we are concerned and hoping that we have left no one at all out of the understanding. Let me give you an next piece here. Same time. And if you notice, the sun is not at the same place. Listen good. The sun is closer to Gemini. Why? Because at that time, we were more inside of the Pisces age than we are now. In fact, let me put it a little more further. Take this in that Jupiter. If it wasn't for Jupiter um, um, attracting many of the meteorites that it does on a, on a regular level, many of these meteorites would have hit and destroyed the Earth. This is what science scientists would say. Now, if that is true, that is to show you why we would have looked at Jupiter with an understanding of its power and what it would have done. 
and, and it's not that nobody was worshiping Jupiter. Maybe the Romans did, but we understood it in the science. That's why we would use nature. Like, for example, we were the first one to use the sun. We were the first one you see the sun on the head of, of the ancient Kemetic gods or the Neteru, you understand. So we were the first one to use nature. We understood the power of the planets. We understood that Jupiter protected other planets, specifically Earth, from oncoming invaders by attracting the problem to it because of its big magnetic um, field. Real thing. So when you hear these fellas come and say, yeah, Jupiter is the king of the gods, they didn't make that up. They knew where they got it from, from I and I. Venus now, Venus. Uh, the goddess Venus. We understood the power of the planet Venus as well and the planet Earth. So I'm showing you these three planets right now, now as, we, as I'm speaking to you, these three planets are in the constellation of, of the fish. You know what I mean? Saturn, the, the, the Lord of the Rings, in between Capricorn and Aquarius. And then again, again, remember Capricorn is not no goat as they teach us. You may have a little drawing of a goat here. Let me take out the animal stuff here. Where does that stuff keep coming up? When you take out the animal stuff, you can see the real animal here. It's a, it's a unicorn. It's a unicorn. Capricorn is a unicorn. It has one horn sticking out here. As I said, we identify these in the heavens. Eh? We don't depend on the, these little artwork that you see popping up on the screen, we are identifying the heavens. So we're telling you that Capricorn is a unicorn. And then we're, we're dealing also with ancient astronomy from ancient Africa, because a lot of these constellations have been changed. That's why they draw them differently now, but in many cases, it's too late. Now then you have Sagittarius, which is seen as a half man and half horse, but, the, but that is, I mean, that's the furthest thing from the truth. When you really observe Sagittarius, it, it's a full man. It's not no, uh, we call him half people. Centaur. centaur. It's not a centaur. It's the archer. Okay. Sagittarius ready to destroy the, the scorpion here. All right. So what I'm showing you, family, this is basically the reading of someone that is being born right, right now. You kind of just, uh, you kind of just, put them in the, the baggage of Taurus, the constellation of Taurus or the sign of Taurus. And again, even though they may be in Taurus and today is the 15th, yes, and considered Taurus, but Taurus is going to come to an end on the 20th. So let me just show you something here now as we, we go forward. Follow this family. You. We get exactly. into the reasoning soon, happened, but I want you to follow this. Of the I, different signs. Sorry. Okay, I'm over talking him. Now, but follow. Oh, yes. So, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You go. You talk. Okay. If you're not Taurus, talking. the age of Taurus comes to an end. Not the age. Pardon me. Not the age, but the the um, um what do you call it now? The the, the 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 zodiac sign of Taurus would have come to an end on the twenty first day. Let me look at my thing here, the 20th of May. And then the 21st of May would begin Gemini. So let me just show the family this now. So we are at the 20th of May here. You see the sun right here in Taurus, right? We are at the 20th of May. Yep. And you can see the sun in Taurus. Follow family. Let's go over one day, 21st of May. The sun's still there. Now, <laughs> remember, you know, this is not spookism. This is energy. This is angles. No one needs to deny these things. At a specific time, the sun rays hit the earth at specific angles. You know, the fact that they are in between certain clusters of stars, they will penetrate a certain energy to you, especially if you are related to the star constellation or you related to the planets and all of these different things. It's just a must. But I'm showing you that now this, the 20th, we're still in Taurus. So somebody born on the 20th, they're considered Taurus. Bam. The 21st, it's still in Taurus. But 
according to what we are told, we have begun the season of Gemini. And that's going until the 20th of June. Okay, good. Bam. Bam. 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. Yeah. June 1st, June 2nd, June 3rd, June 4th, June 5th, June 6th, June 7th, June 8th. What I'm showing you, family, I want you to check this. Good. This is the 8th of June. We are gone almost 10 days into the constellation season of Gemini, but the sun is still in Taurus until June. The sun is still in the constellation of Taurus. I'm telling you, this is one of Taurus horns. This is another horn. This is the red star called Al Aldebaran. Aldebaran, oh, give thanks, princess. And that represents the eye of Taurus. The sun is still in Taurus while we are still basically in the season of Gemini. I'm just showing the family this, you know, because again, the heavens would have rotated many times over in the last 500 years, because 500 years prior to this, this will not be so. Let me show you this family, quick, quick, quick. In fact, let me give you, no, no, let me give you, uh, okay, look at this scene, good, watch it good. You see where the sun is, all right. This is 2022. All right. Let us go to 1,422. Now, this is 1,422, about 600 years ago. Same date, same time. And if you notice, the sun is not at the same place. The sun is closer to Gemini. Why? Because at that time, we were more inside of the Pisces age than we are now. Because really now, on the 21st day, here it is, man, on the 21st day of June, the sun is supposed to be, you see where it is here on the 17th? On the 21st day of June, that's where it's supposed to be. Okay, so on the 21st day of June, in 1422, you have the sun right here, in the middle of Gemini, but yet still it's already on its way out. Now, family, this is serious. And I, I, I don't want to confuse no one here with this academics, but this is the 21st day of June, 1422. Let's return to 2022. On the 21st day of June, the sun will not really be in Gemini as yet. It'll be very close. It's actually feeding off of Gemini. But remember, Gemini is a man and a woman. On the 21st day of June, when it comes to the Pisces age, the sun is supposed to be right in the center of Gemini. Don't worry, just keep listening. I'm going to explain the whole aspect of the Pisces age in, in connection to any other age. Don't worry at all. Believe me, I have you covered. But I'm just showing to you that mm -hmm. this year now, this year, okay, family. 2022. Let me come in here for the moment. Give thanks for life, give and the keep of life. And as I said, wonderful reasoning that was Sunday gone. But I want to get to what we're going to talk about now this evening. I know there's some that I say, hey, but man, I, I prefer to listen to that. That's not a problem. You, you can listen to that. In fact, as I said, we gather in the Tiger's Temple every Sunday. This is where this is taking place, eh? the Tiger's Temple, you know, for those who definitely want that upper levels. But hey, listen, the family, this um, you can definitely get this video if you want to, if you really want to learn what we were pushing out on the Tiger's Temple, you can definitely contact us and you can get a copy of Sunday's edition of the Tiger's Temple. And just like coming into the Tiger's Temple, you know, you get a, 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 there's a contribution. There will be a contribution for the video. You don't expect us to have a, a lecture where people give their contribution to come in, but we give the video away free. No, no. I mean, in, in just in respect of them alone. And let me say that before I go any further. Those of you who are in the Tiger's Temple as well, if I have not sent you the video um, and, and you desire it, because everyone may not want to record it, but if you desire to record it, remember, you are entitled to the recording. Once you are in the Tiger's Temple, you are entitled to the recording of the evening. Eh? So just contact me and let me know that, please, I didn't get my recording as yet. 
so I can make sure I send your recording to you, you know. But what I'm saying, family, those who are watching and may want to see more, that's not a problem. We can definitely send you a copy of that whole session. In fact, all the Tigers Temple sessions will be available for sure. Once you contact us, you definitely get the, the recording thereof, you know. And um, But make sure you're in the temple this Sunday. We won't be going into that, at least not on that level. We may be touching upon the heavens to you know some level, but we'll be talking about the Bible. Not no, it's not no Bible. Um, we call it Wednesday night Bible study business. We are going to be breaking down and explaining in some serious details what that most famous of books on the planet is all about. Real thing. I mean, trust me. When we're done, you can secure that, and that will be what anybody needs to listen to when they need answers as it relates to the book. All right, now, what I have in front of me, this is a document I would have read before. And um, this is from the 9th of November, 1992. As I said, Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. Now there's certain things when we speak about the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, as I said, some people are even saying now like, wow, I mean, there's too many things about him than this Bobo Shanti thing that just hitting them off. The special visit that the emperor paid in 1970. Some people, even some Bobo Shanti, can't even wrap their head around that one now. Yeah. Um, they say, the queen said, there's a man in this land that no one is to molest. You sure is he they're talking about? And so many things. People say, boy, they said they beat him and he, they thought he was dead and they were looking to bury him and he just jumped back up. And he, you, is that so? Then, of course, you hear all sorts of people jump out of the box and say, hey, look, Bongo Eddie dead since 1960 something. That man up there is not Bongo Eddie. Wow. <laughs> so the thing that's really have some mystic ways to it. But anyway, I'm going to read one of the pamphlets here written by the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. And what I'm reading to you is just not but facts. And what I want to highlight is really the, the diplomacy of the man, the reality of the man, and exactly how it was taken. Some of this documentation here is missing a bit of it is torn away but anyway it says here of course the conquering land shall break every chain i the most right honorable king emmanuel charles edwards and my congress the ethiopia africa black international congress formerly headquartered at 54b spanish town road kingston jamaica now headquartered 10 miles bull bay St. Andrew, Jamaica, of which I am president and founder, has been registered in the United Nations since 1967, during the time of Secretary General Youth Hunt. Now, that statement alone, here with a man say that this Congress has been registered in the United Nations since 19. 60 and 7. All right, let's continue. The first, follow me, good family, please. The first conference that the United Nations held in Jamaica was at the Myrtle Bank Hotel in 1967. All right. This conference was held by the United Nations Division of Human Rights under the director, Mr. Mark Scriber. Good. During that time, I made an appointment to see Mr. Scriber, but was informed that I could not see him. I proceeded to write him a letter dated April 28th. 1967, concerning I and my people's right to freedom, redemption, and international repatriation to Ethiopia, Africa, and the brutal conditions that we are being held under 
by the Jamaican government, past and present. I don't know why I do that. It's just a habit now. I received, so you, you, you understand what the king said here, you know, this, this is very simple, clear historical language. You know? The man said that in 1967, the United Nations and the youth and fly down to Jamaica to say they're having a, a conference and it was at Myrtle Bank Hotel. You get that, fair enough. And, and, and he's saying that the main man there, the, the, the representative was, um, here it is now, here it is. The conference was held by the United Nations Division of Human Rights. And the director of the United Nations Division of Human Rights is Mr. Mark Scriber. The King sent a letter and said, hey, I want to talk to this man as it relates to our repatriation and, and, and of course the brutal condition that we've been held under here by this Jamaican keep down government. All right. Well, they say I can't see him right now. Right. I received a response from Mr. Scriber. So the, 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 this is serious, you know. The director of the United Nations Division of Human Rights respond to King Emmanuel. No, no, no. Rastafari, listen. In them time, 1967, I say, right? 1967, we're talking about that. Back of Ireland, so just burn down. Rastan are getting no justice. The king came the year before, Haile Selassie, our eternal most high. 1958, I'm telling you, um, um, the brutality that came down and those that gathered together. Yeah. So the correspondence from the director of the Human Rights Division of the United Nations says a lot. I mean, if, if Rasta was just who people want Rasta to be, that man wouldn't pay no mind whatsoever to anything you Rastas have to say. Eh, eh. So it come down now. This is very, very, very serious. So he says, I received the response from Mr. Scriber dated May the 2nd, 1967, stating that he wished to acknowledge receipt of my letter and to inform me uh, uh, that its contents will be brought to the attention of the appropriate United Nations body, a series or bodies, and will be dealt with according to normal procedures. 67 of them. He also asked, he also asked if I desired my name on the United Nations rostrum. He stated that if I said yes, no one could take it off. And if I said no, no one can put it on. So this is where you just hear Bobo Shanti say these things. Man, let's take boy, them Bobo man can just chat in the old thing. You know? Talk about Emmanuel name and the United Nations chart and nobody can take it off and nobody can put it on. The item give Emmanuel too much power. They say, you know, giving power stay. This is history right before you. Mark Scriber, if it's one thing, eh? If it's one thing when it comes to the Honorable Prince Emmanuel, especially amongst those that sat with him, I don't mean Bobo, even the Rasta elders, all Bonnergees and these different ones, um, Sam Brown and, and, and uh, uh, oh my, what, what, what my elder name there, man? Uh, elder Pidow, all oh, man like Elder Pidow. When you hear them ancients talk, and them man, all the names I call, we talk about royal ancients, you know. Elder Pidow say, none of us live up like Prince Emmanuel. Ask Ras Israel Dyer from Dubtronics. If you think a lion, Elder Pidow say, none of us live up like Prince Emmanuel. He say, 
Elder P.O.C. Again, ask Ras Israel, Dubtronics, Elder P.O.C. King Emmanuel was perfect in all his ways. Hardly passion by talking about my father, Elder P.O.C. So if it's one thing, King Emmanuel, not to tell nobody no lie. He also asked if I desired my name on the United Nations rostra. He stated that if I said yes, no one could take it off. And if I said no, no one could put it off. I responded to him that he should do so because I wanted deliverance for my people. He concluded by saying that when he returned to New York, I would receive a response. Um, there's a piece missing here. I followed through with, I think it would be a response to their New York office dated the 3rd of November and the 4th of the same, 1960 and seven. Okay. In 1968, let's follow this one. In 1968, I received a letter dated April 15 over the signature of Mr. G. N. C. Cato. Who? G. N. C. Cato. Human Rights Officer. Division of Human Rights, acknowledging my receipt of my letter mentioned above and informing me that a copy of my first communication was transmitted to the government of Jamaica in accordance with resolution uh, 728F. Uh, Roman numeral 68. X and X is 10 and 10 is 20 and 5. Sorry, that would be 28, if I'm correct. XXV111 or VIII mm. of the Economic and Social Council. So, so the king have his receipt here in a man. Man's like this, so let me see the receipt. The king telling you number, he giving you exactly, he's showing you who he correspond with, Mr. GNC Cato. I can only you know, relate to you what I have in front of me that has been passed down from our elders to us. And the man that connected with him, G.N. Sakato, Mr. G.N. Sakato, Human Rights Officer, Division of Human Rights, acknowledging the receipt of my letter. He, he mentioned, you know, mentioned above, he informed King Emmanuel that a copy of his first communication was transmitted to the government of Jamaica in accordance with res resolution 728F XXVIII I, 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 of the Economic and Social Council. I, I, I. Bongo Flacco, man. I, I, I. Yeah. It says here it was during the reign of Hugh Shearer, let me read, I skip out and let me read all this too. At the time of my first communication with the UN, the Honorable Hugh Shearer was the Jamaican ambassador to such body. The prime minister of Jamaica at that time was Donald Sanster, who had taken over from Sir Alexander Bustamante because of illness. In 1968, Hugh Shearer became prime minister after the death of Sanster. <laughs> It was during the reign of Hugh Shearer, the UN sent the letter aforementioned to the government of Jamaica, which called for them to fulfill the right of I and my people, the black suffering masses of freedom, redemption, and international repatriation through Article 10 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights which has not been done up to today. I want this matter to be dealt with now. Okay. In 1967 68, 
I was fully accepted and recognized by the United Nations as an international defender for human rights and justice. None of my letters to the United Nations went through the post office. Check it good. None of my letters through the post office, you know, from, from the United Nations went through the post office. Everything came straight to him. No, that, that's me speaking there, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so let, let me show you this now. In 1967, 1968, I was fully accepted and recognized by the United Nations uh, as an international defender of human rights and justice. None of my letters to the United Nations went through the post office, but were officially received by Mr. Quartz. But were officially received by Mr. Quartz, who was the then resident representative to the UN of the UN to Jamaica and placed in the official mail bag of Secretary General Utah. And um, there's a little misprint, not misprint, but the paper for him to receive. You don't know, it's an old thing I'm checking here. No? <laughs> it's like this one, I don't even know, this one comes straight out of the office. Eh? It was declared by UN representative, Mr. Robert Crooks, that I am the champion of human rights. Now, you hear this now, what I'm saying, family. So enough ones would hear you say, yeah, man, King Emmanuel is a champ crown, crown champion of human rights. That man feel like he's something you're making up. And yeah, man, and if Emmanuel tell you so, you know what I mean? We, we, he get that from and all of that. Receipts. Receipts, Mr. G.N. Siketo, you know, of the Human Rights Division correspond with him after he did the correspondence with um with um the the Mr. Mark Scriber, and then as he say, Mr. Quartz, Mr. Quartz is the one that take the letter and bring and bring the information to him. He didn't have to go to the mail or to the post office to mail off anything. You know, Mr. Quartz would come and make that connection directly with him and the the general, the secretary general, Mr. Utan, and then he goes as far as to show you. It was declared by the United Nations representative, Mr. Robert Crooks, that I am the champion of human rights. So even I and I as Bobo Shant, you know, we say these things, you know, but we should have a good standing on what we're talking about. So we can be intelligent in our expression. And even those who may not be Bobo Shanti, even if you're not Rastafari, as the man says still, you know, if you don't believe me for who I tell you I am, at least check my works. Because inside of the works, because it's not what you say, make you who you be now, it's what you do. So what he really trying to tell them is that, all right, you don't have to believe me, just check my works and you'll see who I am. And anyone can see when it comes to King Emmanuel. If you notice, you know, it's just in the last couple of years, a lot of things coming out about King Emmanuel. You know. King Emmanuel has been suppressed by Rasta. Rasta elders have suppressed King Emmanuel. I'm not asking you, and I'm not going to go too far into it eh? Because I've, I've touched upon this subject with clarity already, but it's all right. I don't feel away. Everything blessed. Love, love, love. But I'm telling you, the elders, the elders have hid King Emmanuel from us. Just like how the world tried to hide Haile Selassie from us and tried to hide Marcus Garvey from us. Rastafari elders, tell them I say so, have, have hid King Emmanuel from us, and they know him. Some of them walk with him. Man, when I hear how Congo Rocky speak about Prince Emmanuel, I say, wow. But, and that was still early in the game, you know. But it was early enough still. It wasn't too, too early, I should say, for me to done figure out that there's some hatred for Emmanuel. Yeah, man, in the earliest, man, you'd feel that the rest of them hate Emmanuel. It appear a bit different now. And I guess education has a lot to do with that. 
because listen to what I do in here. You can hate this. Anyone you can hate this. Why you keep this from us? Eh? Hear them kind of thing here. Maybe because nobody else get this kind of recognition amongst us. In this kind of 1967. And we're not even speaking of the churchical order that the man set down. You know? We're not even talking about, you know, you know, something in the sense that, you know, we, we, the, the, the building of the Congress there and all the mighty thing and how much blood a man get and not even that we're talking about. We just showing you how the highest body of the planet, which is supposed to be the United Nations, correspond with this little Rastaman when Rastaman never get no recognition. Them time Bob Marley and Sonny really kick, kick out like how you have Bob Marley today, you know. So you can't say it's Bob Marley make Rasta be Rasta. I'm sorry to say it so, but this is the reality. I'm not playing no games. We hide Prince Emmanuel. We pretend he's not even there. It's I and I as Bobo Shanti. And not just Bobo Shanti. Those of us who are vocal internationally that have to come and kick it out, the, the kick down the door and say, hey, the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, man. The man stand internationally champion of human rights and justice. Where you get that from? From Mr. Robert Crooks, which is the UN representative. Oh, he, he named Crooks, he named. All of them is Crooks. That's not the point. And, and I don't know him, so I'm not going to diss him. But that's not the point. The point is that the official representative is who declare it. The point is that the king had communication directly with the secretary general. He didn't have to go to the post office. Yeah. How you get around that one there? How you get around that one? All the, the letters that go and come didn't have to go to no post office. Mr. Quartz would come and collect them. Imagine that. GN Saketo showing the king that, hey, we don't send response to the Jamaican government, you know, and I'm showing you the receipt in accordance to resolution 728F and the Roman numerals that follow it. And every time we correspond, these high ranking members of this August body respond in one way or the other. I know having the UN like is the UN is some holy, holy ground. We don't know what the UN thing is about, you know. And, and we see, even when George Bush did attack Iraq and the UN said, no, you can't do it. Same George Bush that said he's an artist now. He gave some speech the other day saying, oh, these wicked people, he was supposed to say these wicked people attacking Ukraine. And he said, this, this, this wicked man took it upon himself to go into Iraq. Like he talking about himself, that was no mistake. He talking about himself. I should do a video on that alone. He talking about himself, you know. So I'm just showing you here. He says here, after Secretary General Uten received my communications, the United Nations told the Jamaican government to bring me up to the attention of the public as an international defender of human rights. The government under the leadership of Mr. Shearer ignored this call you know so family i think you can clearly see in all humidity in all humbleness in all you know you could see how humble the man really is because it is clear from international outlook that the man has made his mark as a simple little Rasta man, as a simple little Rasta man who now have no value nowhere in the eyes of nobody, especially them kind of times there. That is why when the emperor come around in 67, you know, again, this is why it's no joke. Even the delegation and the, the king, King Emmanuel being the first to meet the emperor is not by chance, it's not rush the rush. Like when we go in school to see who first in the line, you know, no, it's protocol taking place here. Okay, let's go. Come on, um, Ross is line up. We need that. We need the leader in front. Come on, we need the leader in front. And even if it wasn't just so harsh or rash, 
but whatever had to go through so we know who is first. It went through. Straight up, straight up. So when it says a Queen Elizabeth, there's a man in this land that there's no one is to molest. For in time to come, he shall be Lord over my law. Real thing. And you could see, you could see it's obvious just the, the diplomatic international connection that King Emmanuel Charles Edwards would have commanded. Even if you don't have receipts on certain things, just the receipts that you have, like what we just read, would, would make you say, yeah, man, for real. Elizabeth Bow for Trinaman. And did say that there's a man in the land. No one for put their hand on. Okay, in time to come, he shall be Lord over her law. Yeah. So just showing you the man. <laughs> that we give thanks to the Lord of the Sabbath. We give thanks continually for for. You know, as I said, the man, the, the man, the Christ, you know, but the man, all that we just expressed there a moment ago, we never talk about, well, you know, and the book of St. John said, and if you read Isaiah and all of that, I mean, if you read Isaiah, he you, you tell you that he was led as a lamb, you know, before the Shearer. And of course, as Hugh, Hugh Shearer, as he says, <laughs> Hugh Shearer, as he said, was president at the time. And he was led as a lamb before the shearer. But, but still, yes, there's prophecy within it. But I'm just showing you the natural history, the natural reality, you know. And, and it's not us trying to prop up nobody and making up anything about the honorable king. It's just the reality of what it is. It's just the reality of who he is. Black Christ in flesh. Holy Manuel eyes. Selassie I, ja. Rastafari. Give thanks, family, for the strength. Give thanks for the love. Again, looking forward to your presence with us. I'm talking about Sunday in the temple, in the Tiger's temple. And of course, remember that of, this is just like about one more month, eh? Only one more month left, family. So now is the time for you to definitely reserve your spot to come and join us in Antigua. You're spending seven days with the priest family. I'm looking forward to seeing you, all of those who have already contacted us and, you know, making your way here. I'm really looking forward to meeting you and seeing you and spending some time with you. Of course, remember, it's double hike to Greencastle Hill. And remember, we're talking about the full yoga retreat. Remember, we're talking about the cannabis tour. And of course, so many different things that we will be doing, lecture evening, lecture night, and we will be having the special, you know, our special historians and grills will be giving us uh, a full understanding of what you'll be seeing when you're going to Greencastle Hill. We'll have the night star watch when we will see the sun set from the mountains and then start to count the stars when they come out and have a, a, an evening alignment where I show you how the different stars and parts of the heavens actually align with specific rocks, which you will now become familiar with. You're going to love it, family. As I said, make sure your vacation is secure, seven days and nights with, with with, with joy, we will be definitely having right here in Anu, ancient and modern Anu. Just let the boss know, hey, I got to go to Antigua eh, to spend some time with Precise. I can see what's going on in Green Castle Hill. Feel the frequency, feel the energy. Remember, everything is already set in place for you, family, your accommodations, specifically pristine. Definitely your, your, your food will be taken care of from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh -huh. Fully idle, fully vegan. Of course, the only thing is that you may just have to let us know, not me, you will have to let us know any, you know, allergic uh, reactions you may have to anything. But all of that is in the in the details of your registering. Uh, uh, all you have to do is contact us, family. Just contact us. Everything is set, you know, even down to your, your, your ticket to get here. Yeah, we have already put in place means and ways where we could get you um, reasonable prices as such or good prices or better prices than many i should say for your ticket your your airplane ticket to get here but if you have a, a cheaper way as far as price wise that's or more economical i don't like to use cheaper more economical of course it's all up to you for sure but as i said and our experience is definitely 
very economical. Just contact us, get the information, because I'm looking forward to seeing you come and spend some time with us. Come and, and um, straight up, come and see the grades that we have here, no man. <laughs> and I don't think I can go away with none, but as long as you're here, you're done now. Give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. So you know how to contact us, email us, and, and, and check the website and get more information, precise at institute at gmail.com, or you could link us specifically. Rastafari Experience Antigua is uh, area code 1268, area code 1268, number one. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me start over. Area code 1268, 714. One two two seven seven one four one two two seven, and that specifically is Rastafari Experience Antigua for those who desire more information on the upcoming experience and exactly how you will be getting here. So, family, now is the time to check for your ticket, eh? So you can be sure that you're here by the seventeenth, yeah, and you're sure that you're moving out for the twenty fourth. Yes, family, give thanks for the Sabbath coming in. Give thanks for the love, give thanks for the truth, give thanks for righteousness of salvation. Looking forward to seeing the eye on Sunday in the Tiger's Temple, where we'll be going into the, the reality of the Bible. Holy Emmanuel, I, Sila, Si, Ja, Rastafari. Blessed love.